Hi guys, welcome to my studio tour. Uh, so over the past year or so, I've gotten a lot of requests from uh, different people uh, that asked what kind of equipment I use uh, to record myself, because I do most of my own recording for my albums, um, how I edit my videos and whatnot. So uh, here is my setup and I will show you guys around. So the first items that you see over here is my printer. That is pretty self-explanatory, so I won't go into detail with that. Um, I put most of my files, actually tax files and other stuff in here. Um, and so these panels, these are amazing. These are the clear sonic sorber panels. These panels you can just open like this. And usually what I do, because there's a window right here um, to my left, when I record, what I do is I put one here and then I take the second one. This is very, very high tech. <laughs> uh, I take the second one and then I put this one here. So really this is like enough to just block out all the sound from this window. Uh, the curtains are currently open, but I also close the curtains because they're very thick curtains and they also have soundproofing uh, capabilities. After I have the panels up, then I move my microphones into place. Uh, right now I am recording with two different microphones. The first one is my Rode NT1000, which I love. He has been with me on the road uh, when I was in the circus for <laughs> three years, the Cirque du Soleil. I traveled with just this microphone, did all of my uh, recording sessions. I did an entire album, my Eternity album, recorded for a lot of film, TV projects, video games, all on this one microphone. I bought it for I think about $350 on sale at Guitar Center. I usually put it here and I put a vocal guard on it just to, you know, help reflect the sound so it doesn't, it's like a third layer, you know, curtains, uh, the sorber panels, and then we have the vocal guard. Uh, and this microphone is actually uh, on loan to me right now from a dear friend, Alan Meyerson. Um, this is a Nuvo microphone. It's great. Uh, the quality of these two are a little bit different. I like the Rode because it gets more of like a bassy, fat uh, bottom end tone, which I really like for the cello. Um, and then this is a much more crisp and clear microphone, so the combination of the two I found has been really, really nice. Now we are at my desk, and I thought we would start first with the drawers, and then we'll go above uh, the drawers and below the desk. So in my left drawer, let's see what I have. Um, I have my banana lip balm. <laughs> Very important to stay hydrated around the lips when you're working. Um, uh, my rechargeable batteries for my Apple Magic Mouse. Um, I have some, oh, this turns um, one quarter inch uh, receptor thing into two, which is very useful. Uh, some other, you know, equipment related stuff. Um, Keep It Clean by TechLink. So it's an antibacterial spray for your keyboard. And then the grooves are actually match exactly. So you can make sure that your keyboard and everything is super clean. Uh, I have, let's see, extra iPhone charger, metronome, very important for practicing cello. Uh, this is really cool. This is a VRM uh, virtual reference monitor monitoring box. Because as you can see, I actually don't use uh, monitors. I don't use speakers, which might be a little bit untraditional. I think I basically got really used to, again, like because I tour so much and I travel, getting used to just mixing everything in my headphones, which, um, are the Sennheiser HD 650s. I love these and I feel that they're very, very balanced, great for mixing. You know, nothing is, um, nothing actually that I've mixed on this when I listen to it in the car or on, on other actual speakers was I totally shocked by the sound. So it's very, very balanced. Um, but just to double check and triple check, I have this uh, Focusrite VRM uh, box. So basically what it does is that it actually models uh, different speakers. So you plug it in and you listen through your headphones, but then combined together, it actually does like virtual, I don't know, it's kind of like virtual reality. So audio virtual reality of what it would sound like playing through different speakers so you can hear the difference. So that's really a useful little guy. Um, Starbucks you know, coasters to keep the glass clean. Uh, what else? Oh, I have a little case. This is from uh, a friend who made me a model of my white cello and it came in this little uh, mini cello case. So it's a mini cello case. Okay. Ooh. Okay, then in the right drawer, uh, okay, so I have, I'm a little bit crazy about keeping things clean. My microfiber, I got this at the dollar store, so one dollar um, to keep you know, everything clean, make sure everything's clean. So that's that. I uh, have some cables, 
uh, I have a, you know, nobody uses CDs basically anymore, but if I ever need it, I've never used this, actually never, but if I really needed to connect, you know, a CD somehow into my computer, I use this. Um, I have my backup drives. I actually have like four or five of them, but these are the two main ones that I use, so I keep them in here. Um, and then my cello rosin, Kolstein and Son cello rosin. So I have my rosin here. What I use as a audio interface is the Apogee Duet. Uh, and so for those of you who might not know what an interface is, it's basically the thing, the unit, the box, uh, that connects your computer to the recording source of whatever you're recording. So um, I can connect microphones, I can connect a quarter inch cable for my electric cello uh, or guitar or bass or whatnot, whatever you're recording. Uh, currently, let me move this, my headphones out of the way. Uh, currently, what I have this connected into, so the headphones are here in the front, and then these cables that run directly from the box, they come out. These two are the input. So I currently have two microphones, you know, the Rode and the Nuvo connected to it, and using the program, the Maestro 2 program that comes with the Apogee, you can uh, pick whether you want a XLR microphone cable or the quarter inch cables for recording electric instruments. Uh, you can choose which one you want to use and you set it and it takes two seconds. So uh, that's what I have right here. I mentioned earlier that I don't use speakers. So if I had speakers, like a responsible person, they would be connected into uh, these two little things here. Under the desk in my lovely basket, ta-da, uh, I keep some other stuff that I need uh, to use on a regular basis. These cables are, if you can see, there's like a plastic uh, outside, so it makes it a little bit heavier, but it's very sturdy for live performance. Um, if you, I don't know, step on them or something, it's very, very hard to squish them, like it's super, super firm. Um, so these I usually use mostly for live performance. Uh, these are the new ones that I just got. These are also quarter inch cables and they're really pretty. Um, and I got them specifically for the studio because they're much thinner. And they have these really pretty wooden um, head things that kind of match the floors. So <laughs> look how, uh, these are very, very thin. I have two. Um, so if I'm recording electric cello and I need to record uh, some of my effects, so I'll connect one from my instrument to my pedal board and the other one from my pedal board into uh, the Apogee Duet, into one of the quarter inch inputs. So you have these. Uh, these are the mic cables that I use. I have two, one for each microphone. Uh, these are a hollow oval design, so great quality, great uh, sound. This is my beloved iMac computer. I've had it for actually a few years now. Um, so I record into Logic, Logic Pro. Uh, I think it's a great price. I also started using GarageBand because uh, I'm an Apple girl and Logic is very, very similar to GarageBand. So it was a very easy transition for me. I just opened a file here uh, to show you guys. This is the last remote session, remote recording session that I did uh, for a Italian feature film. Um, and so, yeah, I just record you know, the cello parts, I import the, usually uh, clients will send me MIDI uh, wave files of, uh, you know, maybe all the separate stems if they want to, but it's not necessary. So usually a mix minus uh, without the cello, with the synth cello, um, and just the MIDI, and I can actually read from the MIDI files, the actual notes that are necessary. So this is what it looks like. As an example, I wanted to show you guys one of my uh, session files in Logic. This is for my Game of Thrones uh, main theme cover that I did. Lately, I've been using, uh, for my reverb, actually, the Valhalla Vintage Verb, which is very cost effective. Um, so I have it here. So this is a reverb that I use, and I just usually play around with it. I actually don't have a set reverb, so it changes. You know, I like to keep it flowy, so it changes depending on what song that I'm working on. When I record electric cello, I actually use the um, the in Logic distortion uh, and amp modelers and whatnot. So for the electric cello part, let's see. let me just solo it. Basically, what I use, I went into Logic, uh, into their, this is built in, it's free, it's included, um, their built in amp modeler. I have it on distorted guitar, heavy wide room. Again, I use different um, modelers for every song, so everything's not consistent at all, which is my consistency, I guess. Um, so that's the one that I felt like would fit the best. 
For video editing, uh, I use Final Cut Pro. I started on iMovie, you know, kind of like the GarageBand uh, to Logic situation. Um, sometimes when I'm recording uh, sessions for other people, I'll also provide some video footage if they ask for it. So I, I usually just film myself on my iPhone, and then I take the actual sound from, uh, I bounce it from Logic. I import it here so you have a better quality sound, so. Yeah, it takes a total of two minutes maybe, and I export it, bounce it to the desktop, airdrop it to myself on my phone, and then I post it onto Instagram, which also goes to Facebook. Thank you guys so much for joining me here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this studio walkthrough and found it a little bit useful. Uh, and please don't forget to subscribe and like. And if you have any other additional questions about my setup, uh, feel free to comment below and ask me a question. I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much. Bye.